be invited to join a new, not very serious 5e campaign with some friends. Be playing a changeling rogue. I have amnesia but I get letters from somebody now and then telling me to poison wells and murder people, so I just go along with it. Eventually get the letter saying I need to kill and replace some well known actor. Problem. Changeling's flaw is that he gets way too into the deceptions he pulls and has trouble distinguishing reality. Thankfully this actor is known for his heavy method acting and deep research on roles. Now be playing a changeling rogue disguised as a human bard. I decide to get extra meter with it and make a whole new fake character sheet to lay over my real one. If I was smart I would have printed a whole stack. About this time the party's other rogue meets me and somehow wins up as my agent. He lands me the lead role in the epic tale of Hambone, Mad Prince of Denver. Basically imagine if Hamlet was a half-orc that solved all his family issues with murder and then went on to conquer all his neighbors. Other rogue uses this as an excuse to pull me adventuring since murdering things for shinies would be fantastic role research. Time for a third character sheet. Now be playing a changeling rogue disguised as a human bar disguised as a half-orc barbarian. By this point the DM. The only other person aware of what fuckery I've gotten myself into is laughing too hard to veto my bullshit as I claim I can totally treat my prop greet sword as a rapier. Proceed to some light adventuring as Hambone for a while until we come across a cave filled with orc bandits. Rest of the party still thinks I'm some sort of weird actor and tasks me with infiltrating the cave to figure out what's going on. Hambone was known to be as cunning as he was brittle and so slaps some extra green paint on. Now be playing a changeling rogue disguised as a human bar disguised as a half orc barbarian disguised as an orc bandit. Still have stupid high deception and the orcs seem to be suffering some kind of mental effect so bluffing past them is no problem. Just as I'm getting into the inner chambers I feel a tingling sensation in my brain and another orc attacks me out of nowhere. After some time trying to remember which abilities I actually have, I manage to kill the orc and it reverts to its true form of a doppelganger. Some investigation tells me that this shapper changer was likely a lieutenant of whatever is mentally compelling these orcs. I do the insane smart thing with this knowledge and disguise myself as the doppelganger to turn the tables. Now be playing a changeling rogue disguised as but wait. If I was really this doppelganger then I would have killed the intruder replaced him, and then led his companions back to my master and then stabbed them in the back. Proceed to disguise the dead doppelganger as myself as out of game I run to the nearest photocopier. Rest of party is concerned for my mental health when I return to the table laughing uncontrollably with double the number of character sheets. Now be playing a changeling rogue disguised as a human bar disguised as a half orc barbarian disguised as an orc bandit disguised as a doppelganger disguised as a changeling rogue disguised as a human bar disguised as a half orc barbarian disguised as an orc bandit. Reunite with the rest of the party after they murdered most of the orcs and lead them to the boss chamber. Find ourselves faced with a mind flayer who'd been dominating the orcs and roll initiative. DM makes me roll an actual wisdom saving throw to see if I can peel back enough of my personas to remember I'm supposed to be helping the party. Fail that save so bad that I spend my round holding a skull and contemplating if the people we see are just fleshy disguises and the skeletons are the real people underneath. Now be playing a skeleton disguised as a changeling rogue disguised as. Meanwhile everyone but me gets mind blasted into next week. Next round I actually do make my save and start shanking the surprised squid. He is understandably confused why his underling is attacking him and does the one thing he absolutely should not have done in this situation. He casts detect thoughts on me and goes straight down the rabbit hole. The mind flayer fails an intelligence saving throw that leaves him stunned on the ground. The eldritch horror looks up and asks, what are you? I respond the only way I can. Party then rallies to beat down the mind flare and we all go home with a nice haul of treasure. My share was spent on hiring a therapist. Today's lesson. Never go full method. <coughs> Semi sequel to never go full method. Still be playing in a not too serious 5e game. Chilling in the city market after saving a village from vicious dragon spiders. Be playing a changeling rogue disguised as a human bar disguised as a half orc barbarian. Have gone to therapy and managed to pry off enough of my split personalities to be relatively stable. Realize that my persona of Hambone, 
Mad Prince of Denver is actually the longest identity I've managed to stick with. Recognize it because being a simple, boisterous adventurer is actually very fun and fulfilling. Is this perhaps what I've wanted all along? Meanwhile the party warlock bought a deck of many things at a random market stall for 5 silver. Turns out the DM was pretty much ready to let this campaign die and figured this would be a funny way to achieve that one way or another. Well screw you buddy, I'm trying to have a character arc over here. Warlock decides he wants someone else to test if this is legit and picks me because half the time he forgets I'm not actually a barbarian. Hey Hambo Hambone, the name of a hero demands emphasis, whatever. Want to check out my cool new set of playing cards I easily make my insides check to know exactly what bullshit he's trying to pull. The only deceptions I believe in are my own. Unfortunately, my own deceptions say that Hambone is a lovable idiot and so I must go along with this regardless. DM asks me to declare how many cards I am pulling from the deck. I ask him if a declaration means a verbal statement or simply having intent. He says the later, and I take a deep breath. All of them, record scratch.mp4 the warlock said it was a set of playing cards, and I don't know any better. The only logical course of action would be to thumb through each card one at a time so I can look at all the pretty pictures. DM agrees, but also allows the rest of the party to get a chill down their spine and hunch they should get their asses to the city market to SAP. Warlock sits down to watch as he tries to work out if this outcome counts as a win or loss for him. I shuffle up some cards and pray that luck favors the fearless fool. Draw first card, the fates, giving me a single do-over on a future event. Great, got some insurance if things go sideways later. Draw second card, the star, increase a stat by 2 plus. Decide to drop that on charisma because why wouldn't I want to be able to disguise myself even harder? Draw third card, the key, which gives me pretty powerful item of the DM's choice. DM Alex to hold off on that until this madness concludes, says the rest of the party arrives at the market. Draw fourth card, the vizier, so now I can magically answer one question later. Party comes on the scene and our wizard figures out what I'm holding in my hands. Draw fifth card, the moon, which grants me two wishes. At this point, the deck is finally swatted out of my hand. Warlock is cursing up a storm because he really hoped I'd die to something before taking out so many good cards. DM rules that the deck is somewhat sentient and is gracious enough to not require me to pull out the remainder since it knows I was an unwitting user. I like to think that the deck gave me so many boons just to spite the warlock. While the party argues over what to do with the deck, and punish the warlock, I get to thinking about what to do with my gifts. I can wish for anything I want. But what is it that I truly desire Hambone would wish for glory, but we need to go deeper. The actor would wish for fame, but we need to go deeper. The changeling would wish, to be somebody else probably. But who I think back on my travels and what it is about being an adventurer that seemed different from every other role. Challenge. Danger. Treasure. Risking it all. Celebrating that we lived through it and will do it all again tomorrow. Sharing stories of all we've done and dreaming of what we'll do next. Saving the day. Saving a life. Having friends by your side to share it all. Can I even say that I have friends they don't know the real me. I don't know the real me. Meanwhile the warlock and rogue have pulled from the deck because I can't introspect for 5 minutes without something stupid happening. Warlock pulled dungeon and got pulled into the bowels of the earth while rogue is left a soulless husk after pulling the void. I ask the DM to cash in my vizier card to make sure what I plan to do with my wishes will work as intended. He gives me the green light and I start by using the fates and my first wish to bring back our two missing PCS because I'm a nice guy. My last wish is pretty simple. I wish to be a hero. Cue the burst of golden light surrounding me as out of game I put away my stack of three character sheets and replace it with just one. Now be playing a changeling paladin. The key card disappears and a holy avenger falls into my waiting hand. I smile at the party. We've already met, but allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Nemo, I'm an adventurer, and I'd like to be your friend, sadly. We never did get to play beyond that session, but the DM agreed that ending on this was far better than throwing the tarot of terror into the game and hoping we got eaten. Today's lesson, never use a deck of many things to end a campaign. 
I have to say, I really enjoyed that night, but it is a bit of a shame coming never actually got to play as an emo, but, like, it was a good place to end the campaign. I thought it was really good. You know, all that other jazz. But, look, um, as always, check out the links down below. What you have if you want to read the story. Come has got a few more stories that I haven't done yet, so check that out. Also, if you have any questions, he's normally very active in the comments section, so uh, look for him out down there. I'll probably pin one of his comments, and you can ask away. He's, he loves it, so he does. It's really good. It's nice to be able to ask authors questions, and it's about, like, a cute a after almost i think it's pretty cool anyway it's really nice to see but look as always i uh, hope you boys enjoyed getting more of his stories out soon he's only got one or two left i think that are out at the minute i'm not too sure i'll check it out i'll check it out look anyway i'm gonna hope you boys enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video